In other developments, in the war in Ukraine, a UN Commission of Inquiry says Russia has committed a wide range of violations in Ukraine, amounting to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Also today, Poland's president has confirmed his country will send four Soviet-era MiG fighter jets to Ukraine in full working order in the next few days. Washington has welcomed the plans. In Bakhmut, though, in eastern Ukraine, two Ukrainian army brigades are still defending the city's southwestern flank. Uh, they gave the BBC access to their positions as fierce fighting continued in and around the city. They say Russian casualties far outweigh theirs, but that their enemy is using new techniques to try to seize the city and the surrounding countryside. Quentin Somerville has this report. In war's uncertain journey, fates are decided in the unlikeliest of places. Ukraine has drawn a line in the mud. And that line is Bakhmut. No matter the hardship, the enemy must not pass. This ground must be held. Winter has given way to early spring. They hope it might slow Russia's advance. Uh, the thing is, it complicates the job for both parties. The enemy has difficulty attacking because nothing moves in the mud. Nothing except tank tracks and army boots. The mud's unreal. It pulls you this way and that way. It's a trap for men, for vehicles. It makes moving around this battlefield almost impossible. And for the soldiers of the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade, it means going the long way round. Moving as fast as the territory allows. They're in range of Russian guns. We're told to keep low. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, what Because there are snipers around here. These trenches are new, but warfare along this front is antiquated. Below ground, these are dugouts that their grandfathers would recognise. But by digging in, they've tied up Russian forces here and held Bakhmut longer than many expected. Hi guys. But it isn't just the conditions that are basic. This is a 21st century war being fought with 19th century weaponry. It's uh, Maxim's uh, machine gun. 120 years of history of killing Russians. Uh, weapon from First uh, World War that uses in uh, Third World War. Right, we're heading right to the very forward position. You can hear shelling right now. We've heard automatic fire. There's more shelling. They get attacked here on a daily basis. There are the enemy positions, so let's move very fast. Okay. Almost every day was uh, some uh, shells from mortar or artillery. Um, yeah, we can see the craters all around here. Um, yes, There's a fresh crater right there. And, uh, we need... Oh, we've got to go. We've got to go. There's hardly any tree cover here. The men are exposed. Moment. Moment. And the Russians uh. have found them. OK, go. go. Uh, okay. We can go in the car because a uh, little bit hotter here. And get keep down. Russians are only 500 meters away. That's automatic fire. All along this line, it's grenade fire, automatic fire, and tank fire. No, it's really dangerous there. Bullets are flying everywhere. That kind of fire is every day here. Seven months, more than seven months into this battle. We've created a wasteland. 
This is the longest battle of the war so far. To the north, and to the east, and here in the south, Russia's been making gains, but it's costing them. The Ukrainians say that for every one soldier that they lose, Russia loses seven. But still they hold on here. Bakhmut is a town that no one believes has strategic value. But to Russia and to Ukraine, it matters in this war. It's not a strategic question for us. We're just ordinary soldiers. But this is our land. If we lose here, then do we retreat to Chastiv Yar, to Slovyansk, and then all the way to Kiev? However long it takes, two, four, five years, we have to fight for every piece of ground. So every tiny step of land needs to be defended, even as they toil under waves of attack from Russian prisoners sent by Wagner Group. We were in combat every two hours. As far as I understand, they were Wagner. We were fighting them. And without overestimating our achievements, I would say a single company was killing 50 of their men a day. We checked the figures. They are awful numbers. They're outgunned and outnumbered, but for now, unyielding. In Bakhmut, like in the rest of this war, they've grown used to the odds being against them. Quentin Somerville, BBC News, on the outskirts of Bakhmut.